Hey there guys, welcome to Lux Movement and GR. Today I'll be doing a tail spring bypass on the cap of this Convoy C8 right here. Uh, what I'll be using is, instead of using a silicone, uh, you know, a good silicone wire, 22 gauge, whatever it is, I'm going to be using this stuff right here, the soldering wire, two millimeters, good enough for this tail spring. Be using this uh, Alpha Metals, Fine electrical rosin core solder. It's a low melting alloy with fast acting or acting flux. And then you need snips. And then obviously the soldering iron right here. And something to take the retainer retainer ring off of the uh, the tail cap to get the spring out. Stuff like that. And I'm gonna be using the old helping hands right here. Trusting hands, little buddy, whatever you want to call him. Gonna be using him to do this. Uh, what I want to do first is show you guys this tail cap. And then I'll show you guys, actually I'll show you two, 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 two tail caps. I can't speak tonight, jeez. Let's see, there's that one here, and this one's just an, just a cheap knockoff of a of an ultra fire. It's a truss fire or something like that, I don't know. But I'll show you the, the difference between like a knockoff and an actual good quality spring, or tail cap spring. So, here we go. Two tail caps. Some C8s come with this type of tail cap that's basically a low budget knockoff kind of tail cap to the actual good quality one right here with the gold plated spring and the uh, gold plated board right there and stuff like that so essentially with this one right here um, i'm not saying that you know the c that you do buy with this type of tail cap is going to be so terribly horrible but it's not a good quality tail cap um, along with uh, the other stuff that's inside of that unit that runs this tail cap. Uh, so basically how you take this thing off here, I'm going to show you guys the inside of this one so you guys know what, what it looks like inside and how I uh, bypass it. I did bypass this one. I had it on a uh, on my crossbow when I was walking in and out of the woods, stuff like that. I got treated a couple times by some coyotes. So if uh, as soon as I you know was hunting and if a coyote was coming out, the coyote was going to be Gandhi by the time I walked out of the woods so <clears throat> it was basically just for that purpose only not no you know illegal night hunting and stuff like that and just to protection wise for me anyways for the low budget ones and the uh and some other flashlights you know the old saying righty tidy lefty loosey well with this it is righty tidy and then lefty loosey now on these tail caps it's actually lefty tidy righty loosey so it's the opposite so you'd be going clockwise to loosen it and then um counterclockwise to tighten it so let me take this one out so you guys can see what i did to it what it looks like there we go take that out hopefully i can get this thing out i'll just push it with this come on get out of there does not want to come out. It's being a pain in the butt. I'm going to put it back in and then try. Well, I guess that's not going to work for you guys. If I can't get this thing out to show you guys how to do it. There we go. The reason why it was so difficult to come out, I'll show you. See the threads in there? I'm not sure if you guys can see scratch marks on it. But, you see this board right here? This little lip on this thing here was catching on the threads coming out. So that's the only point of connection right here that is being made with this, with the actual, the whole flashlight itself. It's just that point right there. Where with this right here, this whole retainer ring is obviously attached to the tail cap and it's actually sitting on the board. So it's making connection with the board which is giving you a full connection all the way around, all 360. This one's just doing, I don't know, 10% of the whole circumference of this, of this cap right here. Anyways, back to this. So you push this out, boom. Now when you guys first take this thing apart, or take a tail cap apart like this, the, this spring that's right here, that's sitting on top of this, uh, this wire, right, or this uh, metal right here, it's actually free floating and loose, not attached to nothing. So as soon as you guys think everything's going to be flying out everywhere. 
So basically what I did was I took some uh, some of the soldering wick, desoldering wick, and as you can tell right here, I put it to the to the center of the board or of this little you know metal piece right here. Soldered it to the center, then I put the spring over top of that and ran the wire through the spring, set the spring on top, and then soldered it to it dead center of the switch like so. And then I ran, or then I soldered the top of the uh, the soldering wire, cut it off, put a big blob of solder on top of the spring, and then put this cap back on, and just set the just set the soldering iron on top of the cap, and then until it heated up, let go, let it cool off. I pulled on it, and everything moved together. So what does that's a you know the best way you guys can to do it in in my opinion is how I did it. That's the best way to do it. Which is that? So I'm gonna set that off to the side. We don't need to deal with that right now. Let's get back to this guy right here. So it's going to be. Let's see. It was ready tidy, but this time it's gonna be ready loosey. So I'm just gonna spin it around. Well, you can also see those little dots right there, little indents right there. Just find something. I got a, just a small screwdriver right here, hooked up to it, and trying to undo it if I can. Now when they put this in here, they kind of screwed the threads up a little bit. They scratched the crap out of the threads. So this may be a pain in the butt to get out. Or break th through some of the... There we go. Boom. So there's that tail cap there. Only plastic piece is just on the bottom side of this board. And that is an actual board, as you can tell. Set that off to the side. Pull the retaining ring off. Set it right there. Now you can see the board. So that retaining ring will will contact or contact with this all the way around this whole board, and this you know obviously the spring is attached to the board. So what we want to do is we want to solder a piece of wick. Let me grab this and I'll show you. Solder a piece of wick, uh, just like that, just on the inside, going to the bottom, and then going to the very top of the spring itself. So that's what we're going to do. Get my little helping hands here, whatever the heck you want to call these things. I'm going to hook it up one there. Actually, let me spin this so I get a better view of what I'm doing here. Let's go to about this position, which is good enough. So right there. You're obviously going to want to get to the, you know, the most widest point of the spring. There we go. Now I'm using my phone, just so you know. So I gotta zoom in there and try to focus. So give me one quick second. While I try to focus, I'm gonna auto focus. Bring that over more. Auto focus on the spring. Spring, spring. There you go. Hopefully it's auto focusing on it. If it's not, I'm sorry. It's the best I can do right now. There we go, boom. You don't want to pull yourself probably a size that's probably about three times the length of that. This stuff is really cheap in price, so it shouldn't be a problem of wasting some of this stuff. Cut it. There we go. Plug my soldering iron in, which I forgot to do. There we go. Plug the soldering iron in. So basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a blob of solder right here. And then a blob of solder right on the very top of this one right here. You're going to want it to uh, do it like that so that... Spin it, there we go. Oh, look at that. It focused. So that you put just, you know, pre-solder it right here. Pre-solder it right there. Because once you put the wick in there, what you want to also do too is bend the wick like this. So there's a you know a little L shape and a little hockey stick shape. Run it through this way, if I can see what I'm doing. You got the hook right there. Run it through to where it touches. Sorry. Run it through to where it touches that spot right there. And once it touches right there, once you hit it again, hit that, that solder you already put there. With your soldering iron, it's going to wick itself to the wick. And it's going to, you know, adhere itself to it, no problem. So that's our goal. That's what we're going to try. And then we're also going to do the exact same thing to the top. So let's see, you know what, I'm going to switch this out just a little bit more. 
just because of the angle of the top up here. I want it to position correctly. There we go. Everything's still focused. Let's hope so. It's good enough for me. If not, you guys can still see. Shouldn't be that bad out of focus. Now my soldering skills suck. So we're going to try my best with this. So like I said, just put some solder right here. It's not quite hot enough yet. Nope, gotta wait a second. Let's put some music on. Just so we can chill, come on, there we go. Uh, a little bit more than that. Boom. A little dab of solder there. I'll put some solder up top here. Come on. There we go. Just like that. That's all you want to do for now. Then you're going to grab your soldering wick or desolder wick right here. It is copper, so it's going to make a good contact. Let me spin that a little bit more. Come on, don't play games with me. Spin. There we go. Run that through, if I can get it through. There we go. Oops. Touch that spot right there. Get it wet. Hopefully it wicks right to it. Let it sit for a minute, and then boom. See what I mean? Everything is nice and good there. I'm going to add a little bit more solder to it just so it's, you know, it makes a good contact. And of course it moved, but it's still in place. Good. Now, what you want to do next is not burn yourself like I almost did. You're going to just pull this down towards the solder. Now you don't want to pull it down too hard to where you know it, it kinks the spring. You want it just to where there's just enough play on it right there. Now this is where your pliers come and play because as soon as you guys touch it, if you guys do it with your fingers and you try to pull on that and then solder it, the heat transfers right through this very fast, very quickly. So it's going to obviously burn your fingers, so you don't want that to happen. Now I'll get some solder on this. Ooh, smoky, that's that resin. Set it on top. Boom. That's it. I'm gonna get a little bit more and I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. You don't wanna use too much because this stuff will wick all the way down through this spring. And once it, it wicks all the way through the spring, get rid of that little tip right there. There we go. Very simple, easy to do. Um, obviously with this guy right here, it's gonna be more difficult to do, but that shouldn't be a problem. So let's focus back on there so you guys can see it. Everything nice and stiff. Get your snips, cut it as close as you can to the spring. That's it. I'm gonna back it up here and then we're going to see how well this thing is springy. Uh, everything's good. Now I'm not, let's see if you guys can see right inside there. You can see right inside there where that solder's connected to it. Very good, right to the board. There we go. Top's good. Very, very springy. It still holds its spring. There's nothing in the way of the spring. This here right here was actually done pretty well. <laughs> so that's it. Then you just drop it back into your tail switch here. Let's see if I can get it in place. Boom, like so. And again, everything is righty tighty lefty loosey. Or sorry, no. Everything is righty loosey lefty tighty. Now the only issue is getting this retaining ring to, to start 
back up without it getting off balance like it is. Oh, come on, you. It likes to play games. Uh, almost, almost. We can be here all day just watching me do this. It's a pain in the butt. Come on. I think it's mainly because of when they... There we go. Let's bring it back in there. Make sure everything is off to the side. Positioned right, centered. Still works. I'm going to forget which way I was going now. Oh, this way. Get it nice and tight, then I'll put it in the flashlight and show you guys that it still actually works, hopefully. There we go. Everything's nice and tight. Now this is a flashlight that I built uh, for hunting. Just built it on Sunday. And we're going to see how well, well not how well it is, but We'll see that everything functions like it should. That's low. It's lowest as a green emitter. Medium. Then high. It's perfect. Boom. Like it, everything still works. Um, it is supposed to increase the uh, you know the voltage from the battery. To the driver, then to the driver, from the driver to the LED. So, uh, C8. I highly recommend this C or this this C8 host convoy. Very high quality, uh, great finish on it. Threads are square cut. I mean, if you guys want to build a flashlight, I mean, it fits right in the palm of your hand like that. So, and this thing throws like a monster. So, like I said, best convoy host. I mean, best C8 host there is out there is the Convoy C8. So if you want to, you know, test your skills on making a flashlight with the cheaper ones first, then go right ahead. Then in the end, you should end up with one of these things here to, you know, to build flashlights on. Uh, like I said, this is for hunting. Green emitter. Time to flash you guys. Boom. That's it. You guys can actually see the LED right there. That's cool. And then there's... Hi. This LED right here is the uh, it's the Cree XPE2 green emitter. Only pushes out 122 lumens, and this thing throws for hundreds and hundreds of yards in this host right here. Best host for uh, for throw, anyways, that I can think of. There is a couple other. There's a Solar Force. I have yet to uh, build on one of those, so, but great flashlight, great host. So that was the Tailspring Bypass. If you guys found it informative, please give the flat or the flashlight. Yeah, give the flashlight a like too, but give the video a like. And uh, for more videos, reviews, um, that'll be coming up very shortly. I have an Anchor LC40 flashlight here to uh, do a review on. And also a Crellent. Uh, V4A. It's got the XPL High cool white emitter in it. This thing is a throwing monster as well and it only runs on four AA batteries. So this thing's pretty badass. So again, if you guys felt the, the video was informative, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos and, uh, and you know, videos like this for here for, for DIY stuff, building your own flashlights, other accessories like that, uh, please give it a like and subscribe please the more subscribers i get the more motivated i get to make more videos so i mean these are for you guys not for me so hope you guys enjoyed peace out